In this lecture, we're going to start talking about Laplace transforms. So Laplace transforms are going to give us an alternative way to solve differential equations, but before we can use them, we need to understand what they are. So we'll start with the definition of a Laplace transform. Uh, let f be a function defined for t greater than or equal to zero, then the integral defined as follows, the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t dt is going to be the Laplace transform of that function f, assuming that the integral, integral converges. All right. So this script L character, or sometimes you might see it as a cursive L, this designates the Laplace transform. So when I see the script L of some function, that means I'm trying to take the Laplace transform of the function. And if we use the definition, that means we're going to try to compute this integral, again, assuming that it converges. So let's start by taking an example. So for our first example, we want to find the Laplace transform of the following function. So this time f of t is equal to t squared times e to the negative 2t. So using the definition of Laplace transform, we're going to plug this into that integral that we just talked about. So the Laplace transform of t squared e to the negative 2t will be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times t squared times e to the negative 2t with respect to t. All right. If you think back to calculus 2 where you first talked about improper integrals, you should remember that we can't evaluate an integral at infinity. Infinity is not a number, so it's not really something that we can plug in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our integral using limit notation. And then we're going to combine these two exponentials together. And so if we do that, we're going to have the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b of t squared times e to the negative 2 plus s t. Right? It's important when we're using the definition of Laplace transform that we try to write the exponential function when we combine it using a negative sign, so negative times a value times t. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a few moments. All right, so now we're ready to take the integral here. This is going to require integration by parts. So you can use the integration by parts formula. So that's the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Or you can use the tabular method if you've learned that. And so I'm going to conduct a tabular method to find my integral here. So for the tabular method, we identify our u and our dv. So it's t squared is u, and e to the negative 2 plus st is going to be my v. We're going to differentiate or take the derivative of u. So that's going to give us 2t. And we're going to integrate our v. So that gives me e to the negative 2 plus st divided by negative 2 plus s. And we're going to continue doing that until our u gets down to 0. So one more row is going to give me 2 and e to the negative 2 plus st over 2 plus s squared. One more time, we get 0 and negative e to the negative 2 plus st over 2 plus s cubed. All right, to conduct our integration by parts using the tabular method, we're going to alternate between addition and subtraction, and we're going to multiply diagonally. So our first term is going to be negative t squared over 2 plus s times e to the negative 2 plus st. And again, we're still taking the limit as b goes to infinity. We subtract our next diagonal, so minus 2t over 2 plus s squared e to the negative 2 plus st. We add, so plus a negative will give us minus 2 over 2 plus s cubed e to the negative 2 plus st. And using our fundamental theorem of calculus, we need to evaluate this at our limits of integration. So this is going to go from 0 to b. All right, so to evaluate our limits of integration, we're going to plug b in for t, and then we'll subtract plugging in 0 for t. So if we do that, we're going to get the limit as b goes to infinity of negative b squared e to the negative 2 plus sb over 2 plus s minus 2b e to the negative 2 plus sb over 2 plus s squared minus 2 e to the negative 2 plus sb over 2 plus s cubed minus we'll get 0 minus 0 minus 2 e to the 0 over 2 plus s cubed. 
All right, so what we want to do is we want to evaluate the limit as v goes to infinity. And for each of these terms, we're going to get the same result. So I'm going to show you with this first term. I'm going to show you with b squared e to the negative 2 plus s b over 2 plus s. So since that e has a negative sign on it, we can move the exponential to the denominator. So really, we're looking at negative b squared over e to the 2 plus s b times 2 plus s. Right? And this is why it was important for us to rewrite our exponential with a negative sign so that this process will work. Now, if I try to take this limit, I'm going to plug infinity in for b. I would get infinity in the numerator and infinity in the denominator. All right, so when we get infinity over infinity, that's called an indeterminate form. And so we need to work to figure that out. We're going to use L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says take the derivative of both the top and the bottom. So if I take the derivative of my numerator and denominator, I get negative 2b over e to the 2 plus sb times 2 plus s squared. Well, that limit is still infinity over infinity. So we'll use L'Hopital's rule one more time. This time we'll get negative two over e to the two plus sb times two plus s cubed. This time when we evaluate our limit, we get negative two over infinity. And so that's gonna go to zero. So if we use this approach with all of the terms that have b in them, we'll see that all of these terms with b go to zero. And that's gonna be the case with all of these problems that we do. So we get 0 minus 0 minus 0 minus a 0 minus 0 minus 2e to the 0 over 2 plus s cubed. So the negative out here with the negative on our 2 will cancel each other out to become positive. If we simplify this, we're going to get 2 over 2 plus s cubed. All right, we should note that there is a uh, kind of assumption that s has to be greater than negative 2, right? Because if s were less than negative 2, then that 2 plus s that we've been working with would be negative, and that would change the way that we've approached this, right? So there's an assumption built into this that that 2 plus s is a positive value, which would occur when s is greater than negative 2. All right, let's look at another example. This time we're going to deal with a piecewise function. So we want to find the Laplace transform if f of t is defined to be 4, if 0 is less than or equal to t is less than 2, and it's defined to be 0 if t is greater than or equal to 2. So with a piecewise function, we're going to split our range of integration up into two integrals. The first will go from 0 to 2, the second will go from 2 to infinity, but we're still going to plug it into the, into the definition form. So this Laplace transform, the Laplace transform of f of t, is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the negative st times f, which would be 4 on that first integral, plus the integral from 2 to infinity of e to the negative st times 0 dt for the upper part of the integral. All right, we can integrate both of these terms. So for our first integral, e to the negative st times 4, if we integrate that, we'll get 4e to the negative st over negative s. We're going to evaluate it from 0 to 2. All right, and then plus, if we integrate 0, we, we still just get 0. So we get 4e to the negative st from 0 to 2, and then the second part is just going to give us a 0. So we apply our limits of integration. This is going to be 4e to the negative 2s over negative s minus 4e to the 0 over negative s. So we can factor out a negative 4 over s to make this negative 4 over s times e to the negative 2s minus 1. And so that'll be the Laplace transform for this piecewise function. All right, one more example where we're going to use the definition. So this time we want to find the Laplace transform of the function e to the negative 2t plus 5. So we're going to take this function, e to the negative 2t, excuse me, e to the negative 2t minus 5, and we're going to plug it into the definition. So the Laplace transform will be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times e to the negative 2t minus 5. We can combine those two exponentials together, and again, we want to rewrite things so that the coefficient of t is negative, so we can combine those together. That's going to give us the integral from 0 to infinity or the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b, 
of e to the negative 2 plus s t minus 5. All right, we can integrate this. This is going to give us the limit as b goes to infinity of e to the negative s plus 2. We just rearrange that parentheses times t minus 5 divided by a negative s plus 2 evaluated from 0 to b. We plug in our limits of integration. So we get e to the negative s plus 2b minus 5 over a negative s plus 2 minus so e to the 0 minus 5 over a negative s plus 2. When we evaluate our limits, so the limit as b goes to infinity, again, since this exponential has a negative sign, we can move it to the denominator. So we would wind up plugging infinity into the denominator when we evaluate the limit, and that'll make that value go to 0. So the terms with the b's, they're always going to go to 0 when we're working with this process. All right, And then e to the 0 minus 5 will be e to the negative 5. So we wind up with e to the negative 5 over s plus 2. So that'll be our Laplace transform. All right, so oftentimes in mathematics, we talk about how to find something using a definition or, or in a formal manner. And then we talk about kind of shortcut methods. So uh, in calculus, you learned how to take the derivative using the limit theorem or the limit definition of derivative. And then after that, you learn the shortcuts, the, the power rule, the chain rule, the quotient rule, those types of things. But the same is true for Laplace transforms. So typically, we don't use the definition of the Laplace transform when we're trying to compute them. We just use the, the formulas that have already been defined or derived using that definition. So we're going to talk about the transforms of some basic functions, and then we'll talk about how to use those. So we'll start, the Laplace transform of 1 is going to be 1 over s. The Laplace transform of t to the n is n factorial over s to the n plus 1. The Laplace transform of e to the at is going to be 1 over s minus a. The Laplace transform of the sine of kt will be k divided by s squared plus k squared. The Laplace transform of the cosine of kt will be s over s squared plus k squared. The Laplace transform of the hyperbolic sine of kt will be k over s squared minus k squared. And the Laplace transform of the hyperbolic cosine of kt will be s over s squared minus k squared. All right, so we can use these formulas to evaluate Laplace transforms kind of in a shorter or, or more, more straightforward method than using that definition. Uh, it's important to note first, though, that the Laplace transform is a linear transform. So that means that if I take the Laplace transform of alpha times f of t plus beta times g of t, I can pull the coefficients outside, and I can evaluate the Laplace transform term by term. So this would be the same thing as alpha times the Laplace transform of f plus beta times the Laplace transform of g. All right, so let's do some examples. Let's see how this works. We want to find the Laplace transform of the function f of t equals 7t plus 3. All right, so if I want to find the Laplace transform of this, I'm going to look at it term by term. The Laplace transform of 7t plus 3 is going to be 7 times the Laplace transform of t plus 3 times the Laplace transform of 1. We're going to use the formulas from the previous slide. So the Laplace transform of t will be 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1. That gives us 1 over s squared. And the Laplace transform of 1 will be 1 over s. So if we simplify this, this Laplace transform will be 7 over s squared plus 3 over s. All right, a second example. This time we want to find the Laplace transform of 2t minus 1 quantity cubed. Now, we didn't have any type of a formula that would let us deal with a function raised to a power. So what we're going to need to do to evaluate this using our basic formulas is we're going to need to go ahead and expand this. So we can multiply this out. 2t minus 1 times 2t minus 1 times 2t minus 1. If we expand this, then we're going to get 8t cubed minus 12t squared plus 6t minus 1. And then if I want to take the Laplace transform of this, I can again look at it term by term. So this is going to be 8 times the Laplace transform of t cubed 
minus 12 times the Laplace transform of t squared plus 6 times the Laplace transform of t minus the Laplace transform of 1. So again, going back to those formulas, that's going to be 8 times 3 factorial over s to the 3 plus 1. Now remember the factorial, this exclamation point, the factorial operator means you start at the number 1 and you take the product leading up to the number that you see. So 3 factorial would be 1 times 2 times 3, or 6. So minus 12 times 2 factorial over s to the 2 plus 1, plus 6 times 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1, minus 1 over s. So if we simplify this, that's going to be 8 times 6 over s to the 4th, minus 12 times 2 over s cubed, plus 6 times 1 over s squared, minus 1 over s. And we can go ahead and multiply those together, determine those products, and ultimately that's going to give us 48 over s to the 4th, minus 24 over s cubed, plus 6 over s squared, minus 1 over s. So for our final example, we want to take the Laplace transform of the cosine of 5t plus the sine of 2t. So again, we're going to do this term by term. This is going to be the Laplace transform of the cosine of 5t plus the Laplace transform of the sine of 2t. So in our first term, cosine of 5t, our k value is 5. So we'll plug that into the formula and we'll get s over s squared plus 5 squared. In our second term for the sine of 2t, our k value is 2, so we'll get 2 over sine squared plus 2 squared. So if we simplify this, we're going to get s over s squared plus 25 plus 2 over s squared plus 4. And so that'll be the Laplace transform of this function.